Well, welcome everyone to Thriving in Business and Life. My name is Will Wilkinson. And I'm Christopher Harding. And today, uh, Will, we've got a great guest with us. No kidding. I can't wait for this conversation. Yeah, we, we uh, Gary and I have known each other for years. Uh, Gary Dixon is the president of uh, an organization called the Foundation for a Better Life, and you probably know them from their billboards that are all over maybe the world. <laughs> we'll find out in just a minute. The- yeah, and also the PSAs, very, very high quality, good news uh, public service announcements. Yeah, absolutely. It's the Pass It On campaign, if you've seen those. So without further ado, uh, Gary Dixon, welcome. Thank you. Great to be a part of this today. Yeah, you know, uh, Gary, I, I, I know you, I think you started with the Foundation for a Better Life around the year 2000, if I'm correct? Correct, correct. We, uh, we began with uh, some television PSAs, and then we did uh, some radio, and Billboard came after that, and, uh, and now social media, and uh, finding that, uh, that the idea of, of people taking in a message about values is is probably more relevant, more interesting, and more on people's minds now than than ever. Well, Gary, I'm so happy to meet you, by the way, this this way. Uh, I'm always curious about a, a person's personal trajectory. And if you don't mind sharing a little bit with us about how you got to where you are today, I'm, I'm sure this didn't uh, happen when you were five years old. Just say a little bit about, you know, where you were, how you got here, and maybe if there was a turning point or two along the way that would be useful for our listeners to know about, that would be great to hear. Well, that's a great question. Um, I ought to think about that more. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, uh, you know, we're, we're the product of... Uh, of of a thousand people, right? I mean, people yeah. that uh, we meet along the way, and um, and somewhere, um, I, I think each of us looks to um, a particular person or a a, a situation that uh, that influenced us, and uh, and I think I think for me, it um, it was you know being in the in the in the hills of Santa Fe as a as a young uh, Boy Scout, mm. and uh, and having a a former uh, Marine sergeant as our as our scout leader, he wow. uh, mm. he taught us he taught us so many great values, and he did it so gently, mm. um, teaching us to uh, to make sure that everybody stays together, that uh, we help each other, that this isn't a, a big competition. This is about all of us getting through through whatever we were hiking or camping Mm -hmm. uh through together that we were uh we were one unit and uh Mm -hmm. that was probably a a great beginning point to be taught so well by somebody who who really cared about uh, about young men. What a great foundation for you! Yeah, I mean, it really kind of uh, goes back to the Three Musketeers motto, right? Uh, all for one, one for all. I mean, yeah. what a what a phenomenal mentor. Yeah, he was. He was. It's a great question. I hadn't thought about that in a long time, so I appreciate you uh, bringing that up. Yeah, because uh, as as Will said, I mean, you know. We all end up hopefully doing things that are resonant with uh, with who we are, and uh, you know before we went on the air here, uh, Gary, we were talking just briefly, and you said something that I thought was really uh, interesting, and it, it certainly resonates with I know for me personally was you said you kind of have this sense or belief or or you know deep feeling that everybody is you know, good. Every, every person has good in them. How is, how is that directed both your life, but also your work at the foundation for a better life? You know, it's a, that's an important concept. If we had taken the opposite that people are bad and need changing, that's an entirely different campaign. Mm. Uh, But if you, if you think about people being basically good and, and if you, if you if you dissolve the borders, which, which the astronauts who've looked down on the Earth can do, they, they can see this little blue planet and they don't see all the lines between us that sometimes are separated militarily. Uh, but if we look down on, on the world and we see people from any part of the world 
sitting around their their tables. They're they're hoping that their kids do well. They hope that uh, that things go better for them in life. And and people are they're they're basically good. And what our campaign was about was simply reminding people of the values uh, that they hold dear, the things that they may want to do but feel a little awkward about doing. You know, we we did a a TV spot uh, once. It had tremendous effect. It was just a, a, a young man kind of lost in his own world, his earbuds, uh, and his, you know, listening to his his music. And an old woman with some uh, uh, heavy grocery bags gets on the bus, and he's sitting in a seat and just spontaneously gets up and offers her huh. his seat. Yeah. And would you like my seat, ma'am? And uh, we got more mail. Uh, and more interest off of that, just a simple thing. Yeah. Um, and, and we used the the song from Aretha Franklin, R E S P E C T. <laughs> Great and, choice. And we had over 200 million views of that spot, and <sighs> not because it was you know wow. the greatest <laughs> spot ever done in the world, but it just brought home a simple thing that here's this kid that you might on the surface think well. He doesn't care. He's just lost in his own world. Yeah. But he showed and set an example that um, literally we got mail, email, calls from people saying, wow, I thought we had forgotten about those simple values. Mm. Mm. But you reminded me that we haven't. And, yeah. and, and I can do something about it. You know, yeah, well, I, I, well, I, well, Gary, I'd love to highlight a couple of things you've raised here that I think are really important. One is just the inspiration of an act like that, but the simplicity of it. And, I, and I'm wondering if this isn't kind of a, a response to the complexity in the world and the disempowerment a lot of people feel that when they see someone doing a simple action, they go, well, wow, that's not so hard. Maybe I could do something like that. That's the hope. You know, modeling is really the power of advertising, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what these do. They, they, in a very real way, give you permission to do the thing that you wanted to do in the first place. We all would like to, you know, open the door, give our seat up, but we don't want to be the odd person doing yeah. it. Yeah. And, and seeing somebody do that, especially some hip kid there, mm -hmm. hopefully gives other hip kids <laughs> that kind of permission. You know, it's, it, it's, it's interesting. There's a, there's a crowd uh, philosophy that basically says that um, the first person who goes, the first person who does something, uh, isn't a leader till someone follows them. And, wow. and it's, it's interesting because there's a whole psychology behind whoever acts next yes. and, and models that same behavior as you right. were talking about. And in a way, the, the commercials are kind of like a proxy person who goes first. Yeah. Right. And then we, we get a chance to go, oh, well, they did it. Yeah. I can do it, too. Following their slipstream. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. I have a, a personal uh, connection to that particular spot. I was uh, on a little commuter train going from uh, uh, San Diego down into Mexico with my family. And we, we hadn't put that spot out on the air but um, we had just finished it and we're coming back and a group of um, uh, domestic workers, uh, Latin American women got on our train and just filled the train up with about 15, 20 in our car. Nice. And, and I had two of my boys with me and I said, uh, you guys get up and, uh, and give them your seats. And, um, and one of the women, my wife speaks Spanish, and uh, the women said, oh, that's wonderful what you've taught your kids. And I, and I realized I hadn't taught them this at all. Oh. I, I just got them out of their seats. I, you know, I, I had taught them 30 seconds before uh, <laughs> about this uh, to get up, but it had affected me to where I, I had to do something, and, and the spot came to mind. So I was one of the beneficiaries even before it got out. Yeah, well, you know, this leads me to a question I had as uh, Chris and I were talking. We both have a background in media and very interested in the genesis of your different ideas. Like it sounds like that inspired possibly this one, although I think you said it was produced before. Where do you come up with all these little gems? Because you've got such an archive of, of incredible inspirational material. 
you know, they come from all over. Um, you know, I'll probably get one from you two today <laughs> as you're uh, talking. You were talking <laughs> about this concept, Chris, the, a minute ago um, of, of crowds and the need for someone to go first. Um, but they come from all over. We get emails from people saying, hey, this looks like a foundation for a better life moment. Uh, you know, it's interesting how people, you know, now just send them to you. Uh, we sometimes we start with a song and we say, is there something in that song that could be interpreted? Um, maybe it wasn't the original interpretation, but could it be interpreted? For instance, uh, Annie's song from uh, John Denver, a, a song to his wife, but we turned it into uh, a love song to the earth, you know, the mm -hmm. sleepy blue oceans, the, those lyrics mm -hmm. there. So the ideas come from all over. We, we had a, um, uh, a father-son team. You may have heard of Rick and Dick Hoyt. Yeah, yeah. So I must have gotten 20 emails over a, a period of a couple of weeks from people who were seeing a video that had been done a, around them with a song from Mercy Me, I, I can imagine. Right, and and just remind remind our audience who who this father and son team are. They're remarkable. Rick Rick Hoyt is the father, and his son um, or Rick is the son rather. Dick is the uh, is the uh, uh, is the father, and um, the young man came home from uh, a therapy session. He's quadriplegic. The young man is, and born born this way and came home from therapy and tapped out onto his pad there. He uses a stylus that he holds in his teeth and tapped out. He said, uh, one of our counselors um, has been diagnosed with cancer and we're going to do a 5K. Uh, can I run in it? Can yeah. I do it? And, and the father said, well, okay. And so he got in the wheelchair and they went on this uh, 5K. And when he got home, uh, young Rick tapped out you know, when we did that, I didn't feel disabled. Uh, and the father said, well, we can do that again. And so yeah, eventually that's great. they ran 60 or 70 marathons. They did Ironmans. They did triathlons. They, I mean, Dick Hoyt would, would put a, a strap around him and, and put him in a, in a, in a small boat and they would swim the mile swim that you have to swim in the, in the triathlon. They, it was just amazing what they did. And, um, and when we saw that video, we said, we've got to do this. We, we've yeah. got to capture that yeah. uh, on, on a billboard. And so that's where ideas come from. They just come from everybody. Well, so when, let, let's take that one as a great example. So when you, when you saw that and you decided, to, let's, let's make a campaign from that, what was the pass it on slogan? What was the value that you were highlighting? You know, that, that's, a, that's a great question because the, uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, what that particular one is, but how we get to those, sometimes we, uh, we look at them and we say, okay, in the beginning, we know what this value is going to be. And then we will shoot the pictures, interview the people and, and find out, okay, this image, this situation speaks to us a different way. There's something even deeper and, and more remarkable. I think the early values for that would have been persistence and determination. But as we got into this story about the dad, who wasn't a runner, he was just a dad. You know, he, was just, he was just home from work. He had a marketing job somewhere. And, and so... Uh, the headline there is dad's been behind him for 65 marathons and the, and the value is devotion. Wow. And, and wow. it really came from the heart of really examining uh, this dad who, who really changed the life of, of the, of the whole family. You know, they, they, this wouldn't have happened. The story wouldn't have happened. People, I mean, there's been documentaries done uh, about them now, but uh, they are truly Team Hoyt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's coming up for me, Gary, hearing this story, but also your earlier comment about how you come up with with these uh, these ideas is a kind of a mindset of, uh, I was looking for the right words, beneficent opportunism. 
Uh, it's like you're poised to see the good and not just to see the good, but how to, to see how to leverage it into a message that can help other people see the good. And that seems to me to be a kind of another layer to what you're doing. There's the good news on the surface, it's inspiring, but also the, the mindset of, of looking for, for good news, if you will, looking for inspiration everywhere. Well, that gives me an opportunity to tell you about something that is uh, happening in about two weeks. We are modifying uh, our messages because, of course, now it's more two-way than one-way. And we're the new line, it's always been the Pass It On campaign, as you said, Chris, earlier. Um, but now it will be, um, the theme will be Pass It On um, dot com that excuse me that will be the website pass it on dot com and the values will say things like confidence is in you mm -hmm. uh, devotion is in you love yeah. is in you yeah. affirming that it's already there that we all come with a, a prepackaged set of of values and character traits that sometimes are dormant until the situation uh, arises where we need them you know usually in a crisis uh, I'm sure as we're uh, looking at uh, Hurricane Harvey out across the, uh, uh, the Houston area right now, there are stories of heroism along with the tragedies. We're hearing about regular people who perhaps never imagined being heroes who have mm -hmm. stepped up. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we're, we want to affirm that. We want to say that those values are already in us. That's a, that's a, that's a real important shift i mean a real a kind of a natural evolution and and i think it's in a way you could say um i don't want to overstate this but somewhat courageous from a marketing standpoint to take something that's been working and now in a way evolve it or allow it to evolve into this a really you could say maybe deeper or higher level concept you were saying that um, it gives people uh, a motivation to do something about what they are seeing. I think that's what you were saying. And, and that's what our hope is, is to encourage people to tell us their story. You know, we, oh. we've told a story, but everyone has one and we'd love to hear one back. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, and we think that that kind of material, those kinds of user generated stories will be really, really interesting. Well, you, you've reminded me of a little s switch we do, uh, you know, both in our book and this course we're developing on the familiar saying, you'll, you'll believe it when you see it. And uh, we, uh, you, we've, we switch it around to you'll see it when you believe it. And you made the comment that people are all basically good. Uh, I, I don't know that everybody believes that. So the more people who believe that, the more likely they are to see the good, right? That's beautiful. I just wrote that down. That'll show up in something. Well, <laughs> 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 that's great. You'll see it when you believe it. No, that's that's true. That's true. Yeah. When uh, when we see something being done that we would like to do somewhere in our hearts. It, it, as I was saying earlier, it gives us permission. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking with uh, a fellow who ran the, the Jeep campaign, um, and, the, and he said, we sell tens of thousands of Jeeps in, uh, in Manhattan. He says, but they don't need a Jeep in Manhattan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not likely to go <laughs> off-road in Manhattan. <laughs> they, they barely need a Honda Civic, you know. They... they yeah. uh, They'll do just fine, he said, but there's, we, we examined, he said, we did some research and we found that people, um, there's a certain kind of person that would buy a four wheel drive. It's the kind of person that says, if I ever needed this, I've got it. Yeah. And, um, and I think that when they do their advertising, they give people permission to do the thing that responds to their inner needs. And, and when we put up similarly a values message that that shows a young man giving up his seat or, or whatever it may be it's the kind of thing that's always in us we always want to do the right thing and and I think that anytime 
we see that we see it in, in a, at a concert you know when when someone lets us in uh in a long line after a concert or a game we tend to let the next guy in yeah uh, it, it, it's it's a if you just look at it, it it's it's how we all want to be and i think the more talks the, the kinds of things that, that you two do in your in your seminars uh kind of bringing uh, values to the surface for, for business people, um, the more messages that are out there, inspiring stories that we see on the news, the more of that that will happen. Well, you know, I've, I totally agree, of course, and I've wondered just in one small instance, how often, uh, you know, a person who discovers the, the driver ahead of them has paid for their toll is inspired to do the same for someone else later. We hear about it. We, we hear about it. People send us stories about that. You know, we, we, we were uh, somewhere, I can't even remember where we were. We were out of town, and, and my wife went to the grocery store and suddenly realized, you know, there she was at the counter. She hadn't bought a lot of stuff. She maybe had probably $20, $30 worth of stuff and suddenly realized, oh, my goodness, I didn't bring my purse. And there was that moment of kind of embarrassment, you yeah, know, and, right. and, <laughs> and suddenly she's, she's feeling kind of chagrined. And the guy behind her goes, ah, I got it. <laughs> she was like, what? <laughs> you know, but, you know, her sharing, she's told that story, I'm going to guess, probably several dozen times at least to people. Right. So you wonder how many people has that inspired? Yeah. Story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it really is that pass it on uh, kind of idea that, that, you know these things inspire so so it's so will values.com just as a, a point for our our listeners values.com will become passiton.com right every everyone that's still going to values.com will be redirected but but we think it's really the heart and soul and always has been of the campaign that people want to pass these along and fortunately we were able to get that that website and now people can go to the website and do what it says. Pass, pass it on. Pass the stories on that you're, you're finding there. Well, Gary, I'm sure that besides the accolades and the appreciation that you receive for spreading such uh, good news, you must also get some, you know, concerned comments from people who are really struggling with, you know, the evidence of bad news all over the, the news. That's what the media tends to feature. What do you say to those people who are getting really discouraged and, you know, kind of tending towards uh, giving up hope? That's a great question because we do get those comments, people that uh, feel like their their mountain is a little too high to climb yeah. and that our optimism is a little bit Pollyanna. You know, that might work for somebody, but not for me. Yeah. And And I think what we've tried to do is have such a variety of heroes, so to speak, that... Um, you can look at them and say, you know, this person lost their leg in, a, in an accident, but they have decided that rather than sit life out, they're going to they're going to press on. Um, we had one, of course, obviously more famous, Michael J. Fox, uh, with his Parkinson's. Yes, and uh, you know, could have retreated. You know, his hands shake uh, a lot of the time, and could have could have backed away from life, uh, but didn't. He wrote a book called Looking Up mm. uh, in the midst of his problems. And, and we can all take a page there and say, you know, we may have hit a bad spot, mm -hmm. but it's how we handle it. You know, Christopher mm -hmm. Reeve, when he yeah. was living, you know, this handsome, virile actor, uh, now paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah, after Andy. playing Superman. <laughs> yeah, after playing Superman. Uh, uh, he became the face of the Paralysis Foundation and made huge strides in research, yeah. Yeah. Uh, saying, with what I've got, uh, I'll, I'll try to make an impact. Well, it's perspective. You, you kind of see what someone has done handling a huge problem, and it puts your own troubles into perspective. You know, you know the, the, uh, the other question I had, Gary, is, you, is your kind of whole process is evolving here with PassItOn.com. One of the things, if I'm correct, that you've done with Values.com and the Foundation for a Better Life is you've really 
uh, figured out a way to provide content for schools as well. And so I'm wondering, um, you know, how's that gone? And is that something that will continue? Yes. Great question. Um, it started really innocently. We hadn't thought of doing things for schools um, until a teacher who, who was looking out their window on Times Square saw our Kermit the Frog billboard on Times Square. It says, eats flies, dates a pig, Hollywood star, live your dreams, pass it on. And she said, could I get a copy of that for my classroom? And we looked around and, you know, all the files were at some printer somewhere. We couldn't even print an eight by 10 of this thing in our <laughs> office. And, and we didn't know how to get it to her. And so we said, you know, we need to be able to do this. So now, these many years later, we send out about fifteen to 20,000 posters to schools free of charge every year and a DVD. Oh. You know, we hear about schools having cutbacks. There are still a number of schools that have digital screens in every classroom and the principal gets on every morning and says, good morning, you know, and, and, uh, and so our TV spots are often used as the thoughts of the day for the school, Fantastic. which, which is fun. We hear about them from, That's from great. kids and teachers. That's great. Well, Gary, Gary, I want to ask you a question here before we totally run out of time. Uh, the site that at the moment people can go to is values.com, correct? Uh huh. And what would you like to suggest to people who are listening right now, getting inspired by the incredible work you're doing? You know, what's your suggestion? What, uh, what, what, what should they do? And I know it's different for everyone, but what's your kind of inspiring uh, suggestion for listeners? Well, I think it comes back to what you said a few minutes ago about... Um, You'll see it when you believe it. And, and I think that it's, it's having faith in humankind. You know, you, you look at the news and you could be very discouraged. But if you look a little further and you, and you see people around you who, when someone drops something, uh, someone else reaches down to pick it up. And, and maybe you're the beginning of something good in somebody's life. Maybe you're standing behind uh, Mrs. Harding in the grocery store and, <laughs> and, you, and you notice somebody in tough shape. They've got two kids, a stroller and a, and a grocery basket, and maybe you open the door. Uh, but that, that's really where it begins. It, it isn't, you know, fly to Africa, and, you know, though, though that is wonderful. But it's really, it, I'll take the, and this is all from Mother Teresa, but she was asked the question, so with all of the problems in the world, what should we do? And she said, do the thing in front of you. Yeah, yeah that's, that's beautiful. Do the thing in front of you. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to, to close this. Uh, we've been speaking with Gary Dixon, the president of the Foundation for a Better Life. What a great name for a foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful, Gary. Thank you so much. And thanks for the uh, forward in our book. So appreciate it. You are most welcome. A thrill to be on your program. Well, it's really terrific to meet you. And I've decided I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> Everybody wants to be like you guys. <laughs> Well, thanks again, and to our listeners uh, all over the world, uh, we're happy to hear from you. If you've got inspirational stories, you can reach us at thrivinginbusinessandlife at gmail.com. And I'm Christopher Harding. And I'm Will Wilkinson. Thanks for joining us for a really terrific program, and we'll uh, connect with you again next week. So long, everybody. Mm -hmm.